The Peugeot 308 is as familiar and reassuring a family car as it gets in the UK, being a long-time rival to cars like the Ford Focus and Volkswagen Golf. But, as with the rest of the Peugeot range, with this new model, the 308 has undergone something of a reinvention. For a start, just look at this thing. It looks absolutely brilliant. I think it's probably the best looking car in the class, which is saying something, because you've got stuff like the A-Class, which looks brilliant as well. Um, anyway, Peugeot have done a brilliant job on the styling, even in this mid-spec Allure premium trim that we've got here, which is probably going to be one of the biggest selling trims. Engine options include a 1.2 litre petrol, a 1.5 diesel, and a plug-in hybrid in two different power outputs, including the 180, which is the lower powered that we're testing here. Definitely going to be the bigger seller because it's much cheaper than the 225 that's your other option. Pure electric running goes from 36 to 44 miles on a WLTP range. Um, that depends on wheel size. So all in all, really competitive in terms of the efficiency as well. Not only that, there's also a pure electric E308 arriving in 2023 with a range of around about 250 miles. But if you can't wait that long, then the plug-in hybrid that we have here is sure to be the best option, especially if you're a company car buyer, when you will benefit from the much lower tax cost that it brings over a normal petrol or diesel equivalent. Before we have a look around the inside of the 308 and talk about practicality, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our lovely videos on new and used cars. Right, back to the Peugeot 308. And if we have a look in the boot here, of course, this is the plug-in hybrid. So it does lose a bit of boot space, but it's still, it's good enough for a single chunky buggy, maybe kind of a medium sized dog. So you get your underfloor storage here, but the thing is, this is why Peugeot give you the case for your cable. Because this is your standard type two cable that comes with a car, so you can plug into your home wall box. And it doesn't really fit in the underfloor storage. So it's one of those things, you look at it and you think, excellent cable storage, but actually not really. It's not quite big enough, which is a frustration. So you probably are gonna have this case hanging at that in the boot all the time. Other than that, to be honest, it's not bad. Sure, I have to say, say that Leon's gonna be better for boot space, but it's probably gonna do the average family perfectly well. Rear passenger space in the 308 is a little way off what you get in the Seat Leon, but you'll still get a couple of average sized adults back there very comfortably. And if you do want a bit more rear headroom, then you can always go for the Peugeot 308 SW, which gets all of the same engine options as the hatchback and also gets a little bit more rear headroom and a bigger boot. Peugeot has come on in so many ways, like absolutely light years in the last few years, but interior quality, I think, is where it's really moved forward. It's absolutely brilliant and the 308 more so than any of them, I reckon. I really like this sort of textile finish on the doors. The design of the dash is really interesting and cool, looks very modern. And they've updated the infotainment for the 308, which is good news indeed, because that was one of the weakest areas for the 208 and the 508. Now, you do get in all of the cars, you get this 10 inch touchscreen, but you have to go for a lower premium or up to get these interesting touch sensitive shortcut buttons which are actually really useful and you can actually decide what you want on these as well they're personalized so you can choose if you want your radio shortcuts and you've got your climate control and all of that stuff it's definitely an improvement um, the climate control is still in the screen but it is easier to use than before um, so I will forgive it for that and uh, generally I think it's a really lovely place to be this new infotainment system is definitely an improvement on the old one it's a little more logical to use, the screen responds more quickly, and it's easy to find those sub-menus for things like dimming the screen than it was before. Of course, you also get wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, SatNav, and all of the functions that you would expect. Of course, I've got to mention the Peugeot driving position. Peugeot are adamant that this works. They've got the dials above the steering wheel, which has got a flat top to it and flat bottom. It's a little steering wheel. Do you know what? Um, I think I'm so used to it now that I don't mind it, but I still feel that I have to raise the seat more than I want to to be able to see the dials clearly. So I still don't think it's a particularly logical way of doing it. If you're thinking about buying a Peugeot, always go and make sure that you sit in the car, faff about with the driving position and make sure that it suits you because it doesn't suit everybody. When it comes to charging, the 308 hybrid doesn't charge as quickly as some rivals such as the Mercedes A-Class. But plug the Peugeot in via the Type 2 socket at the rear of the car and you will get a full battery in around about four hours from a 7 kilowatt home wall box courtesy of the car's standard 3.7 kilowatt charging rate. Or you can pay extra to up that charging speed in order to be able to get a full charge in under two hours. You will also have to pay extra for a cable to plug into a three pin domestic socket which will fully charge the 308 Fev in about seven hours. 
Peugeot 308 is only available as a front wheel drive. You can't get a four wheel drive version. Uh, I don't think most people are going to be too fussed about that. And perhaps more interestingly, you cannot get a manual Peugeot 308. So I think if anything, this is probably one of the first real sort of death knells for the manual gearbox. It's a bit sad really, isn't it? Especially, you know, I think most people won't care. Personally, I do love driving and I love a decent manual gearbox, especially on, you know, something like the little 1.2 litre three cylinder petrol that you can get in the 308. It's always been a really nice combination. Anyway, that's it. You've got your eight speed automatic gearbox or nothing in the Peugeot 308. So it's a good thing that actually the gearbox is all right. It changes gears quite nice and smoothly in unhurried driving. I've got to say around town occasionally I've found uh, it does get a little bit clunky. It sort of feels like it holds onto a gear for slightly too long and then you can feel it sort of change up a little bit jerky. And that's mostly at sort of, you know, almost sort of crawling speeds or in traffic around town. But most of the time it's actually really smooth, not bad at all. You've got paddles on the steering wheel um, to change the gear manually if you want. To be honest, you don't really feel you need it. And performance is absolutely fine as well. So it's not to 62 in seven and a half seconds in this uh, hybrid 180 that we've got. It does get a bit coarse if you rev it very hard, this petrol engine. But thankfully, because there is enough torque um, between that electric motor and the petrol engine, you don't really feel like you need to rev it right, uh, right up to the red line very often at all. In fact, interestingly, the 225 version of this, which is a lot more expensive, and it's only 0.1 seconds faster than the 180. So I really don't know why you would get that one. It's worth pointing out that this is a pre-production version of the Peugeot 308, which we have got cheeky early access to, thanks to it being on the shortlist for the European Car of the Year award. So it does sound a bit like I'm sort of damning it with faint praise, but um, honestly, the Peugeot is genuinely quite a nice thing to drive. It's uh, got a nice way of turning into a corner, nice and sort of immediate, which is obviously helped a bit by this little steering wheel. It gives it that sense of real kind of like nippiness. Um, that can take a bit of getting used to, but generally, honestly, it's a really nice thing to drive. You've got your drive modes here, which in the 308 hybrid, you've got three options. You've got a sport or you've got hybrid or pure electric. And I think that kind of works actually. It seems to simplify it over having your drive modes and then another button for changing your electric modes and all this. Plus, you've got your e-save mode on the screen here, which enables you to um, tell the car to actually charge the battery if you want, or you can save your pure electric running for later in the journey, which you might want to do around town, because uh, the 308 is definitely a bit smoother in its pure electric mode. It's really lovely to drive in that. Brake feel isn't too bad either. Um, in fact, I quite like the fact that you have to give quite a lot of brake pressure um, to get sort of decent braking, and that makes it easier to modulate if you're in faster driving. And it's a really easy car to drive smoothly around town. Of course, you've got brake regen, but Peugeot has set the 308 up to feel very much like a normal car. So even when the brake regen is working, it just feels like normal engine braking. Or you can up it with a little B button down here, and then you get something a bit more like you might be used to if you drive an electric car. The Peugeot 308 has always struggled to find a unique selling point in the family hatchback class. But this new model, well, I think it's closer than ever to really challenging options like the Volkswagen Golf because it looks better than ever. I mean, I think the way it looks inside and out is probably going to be the chief reason that most people will opt for it. But on top of that, it's one of the most efficient cars in the class and it's well priced. It starts at £24,000, um, £33,000 for the plug-in hybrid. But if you can live with that slightly mediocre practicality um, and slightly odd driving position, well, if you'll forgive the cliche, the 308 really is a car that you can buy with your head as well as your heart. As for real world range, well, we've found that the 308 will do around about 27 miles to a full charge in very cold weather that we've had during our test drive. So you'll see more like about 30 to 35 miles in the summer. And when you are out of charge, you don't have to try very hard to get more than 40 mpg out of the 1.6 litre petrol engine. That is it for the 308 review, so don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the CarGurus UK YouTube channel and head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars.